It's me again, Polarity from YouTube. You all know me from several videos. Uh, talking in bad English uh, with a German accent. And in this video, I want to create something from nothing inside Bitwig Studio. And I did this before and I uh, got a lot of nice comments on, on these kind of videos. And yeah people seem to like such content. So I want to create something from nothing and um, let's start with a phase four uh, instrument here and maybe create some sort of nice bass sound. And the first thing is, of course, I want to route operator B into A, the tune it a bit and maybe go for a sine wave, activate uh, Y and turn this up to get a nice, get a nice uh, noise, white noise. And let's distort this a bit. Maybe something like this. And I roll with uh, 170 ppm, so it's possibly drum bass. Yeah, let's add the modulation and I'm using the ADSR to just move in the white noise and the tail of the sound. And maybe also the modulation of the B operator. It's again all about finding the right sweet spot. And maybe we also can um, modulate uh, the tuning. Let's go for the pitch here. 
with a modulation. Uh, stay at the stay in the key at the start, and then I try to move away from the from the root key. Yeah, and maybe go for um, plus seven, which is the perfect fifth. Just to have a slight, um, slight amount of uh, alteration. It's basically the same just the same notes, right? But with the modulation, you can bring in a bit of variation. Okay, let's clone this. <clears throat> and let's try and bring another kind of modulation to the table. <clears throat> yeah, the shape is also nice. Maybe uh, go here. Maybe give go for one octave. Okay, <clears throat> uh, now I try to. Um, make the sound a bit more interesting by filtering and at the top frequencies I try to bring in a um, reverb uh, with short release times on the reverb Yeah, and maybe use one of these blue devices and just delay one channel. mid side split containers where we can change the side and the mid separately and I go for the mid here and I use an EQ 
and the only Q in the mid channel um, a bit so we have only the mid range basically more or less on the side channels Okay, let's go with, the, with this for, for the moment. Let's, let's try and find a groove. And I start with the E kick. And I think we are in F, okay. So, going for a triad, just basically, uh, we are in F with our base, and triad would be, the, would be this, and this is the base, and we're going with a kick for this, and maybe I try to EQ the snare for the C. So, um, <clears throat> let's move this here so it's not so confusing. And yeah, tune it to A0. And yeah, let's search for a texture for the kick drum. So we have a bit of um, dirt on the top. Um, let's see what I have here. Yeah, something like this. Just a random texture. And yeah, let's actually use use the replacer. <clears throat> and I'm using the high pass fitter section here. So we have only the top top end of the sample kick. Okay, this is fine for now. Now start to EQ the kick drum and we are in A, so go to A0, which would be the root or the base and go here for A1. Use an EQ5 <clears throat> and go here for A4. Let's see. This is A6. So we basically um, try and bring all the harmonies of the root fundamental note to the front and leave the rest behind. Okay, let's roll with this. And um, yeah, I want to show a trick actually. And um, 
when you use the transient control, you have these nice modulators here. F um, and you can use this to actually just distort the tail of a sound and leave the attack uh, untouched. So we can use this here and use uh, the drive. As you can see, um, the drive is only uh, gained when the sustain is playing of the sound. So we have a distortion on, but only on the tail of the sound, which is pretty nice sometimes. We can actually use um, maybe this and go for a... Um, a4 or oh, A5. Yeah, let's go for A5. And then that attack phase, we just move this up a bit. You, you don't need to do this for a nice kick drum. It's just me playing around and showing you what you can do with the transient control. I don't do this every time. Uh, it's not necessary, basically. So let's roll with this. the textures a bit too. Yeah, let's try and find um, um, a hi-hat sound. Ah, this is nice. So, use this. And let's maybe, um, yeah, add more alteration. Nah. in. As you can see, I don't use the, the drum machine. I don't like it. I don't know why, but it's too... I need to do... It's basically easy workflow, just to drag this in and you have a new layer and you can do everything on this on this layer and it's so easy. Yeah, let's go for the velocity settings here. Bit of alteration. Make this smaller so we could try it out. Yeah, maybe add some um, quantize here. A little bit of shuffle. Let's go for... Hmm. 
this is not working. Let's go. Maybe try another. Yeah, let's try loop. Uh, 172, go for slice. Yeah, let's modulate um, this mix button here. And mm, go from polysynth and place something in F. And to make this easy for me, because I don't know the keys of F minor, I go for the sharp minor, which is two semitones down, so I have to pitch it up. Now I can play play on the white uh, the black keys, and it's perfectly F minor.
here and maybe try and use the um, quantize here again. this together because this are the drums. This is the bass. Don't know how it sounds with the bass. Let's try it. I think we need more bass variations here, at least if we want to have a bit of interesting track.
Yeah, and let's maybe um, use one of these filters here and a free running LFO. So I changed a bit um, of the ordering of the modules, so we have the reverb on the end. And this is a bit too, too fast, I think. J is join. Okay, now I can make some alterations. another pulley synth and I also use the pitch shifter again so I can use the black keys. So I want to make a nice sound, but not too, too petty. Uh, more like a key with a nice Yeah, 
now maybe go for the tonic. Everything a bit. And maybe go with the middle note uh, to the top and one octave higher. It's not right. Uh, the groove is not. It's not uh, really something I like at the moment.
Ja, better. Simple is always better. So let's try and um, make a quick mastering and because the smart comp is new I'm using it all the time. Let's go for bass. And maybe use one of my LU meters. And use of course here on the base um, I use side chain ducking and I'm using the drums bus. And in the music bus I'm using possibly Gulfos. And the drums and the bass, I group always together. I have a drum and bass bus. And I'm using compressor again. Drum setting. Out of 
first sample from this one here is pretty loud. Um, And let's try the smart comp again. And also an element for one euro, one dollar. And I'm going for minus 20 loves and use the learn threshold function. Now we have uh, something I can, uh, um, yeah, let's call this, um, yeah, how, how I want to call it. Uh, let's call it element. Oh, get one. Mm. And now I have something I can come back to weeks later and delete it <laughs> or continue on this. I don't know. I actually have to bounce it. Save, export. So now with the export, I can always listen to it when I am not in Bitwig and can decide if I want to continue work on this or not, or what I want to do with it. But now I have a small little draft I can come back to. Yeah, and I hope you enjoyed this video, um, watching how I built something inside Bitwig. And yeah, leave me a comment and a like and tell me what you think. Until next time, I see you, bye.